Hey everybody, what's up? This is Beanie and welcome back to another video. Guys, today we're going to be talking about Madison Bumgarner, one of the hottest names on the free agent market this year. Everybody really wants him and I'm here to tell you why you and your team shouldn't. Now, I know that that sounds crazy, right? We're talking about Madison Bumgarner, a postseason guide, a guy that if you want your team to get an elite pitcher in the postseason, this is the guy that you go after. And a lot of the uh, a lot of different publications' projections reflect that. I saw one publication that suggested that he was going to get a contract in the range of four years, $72 million, which is an average annual value of $18 million per year. I'm here to tell you that that is insane. Even if he got a qualifying offer and that's that AAV is lower than what the qualifying offers AAV would be, I'm sitting here telling you that all of that is perception and from a value perspective, Madison Bumgarner is not worth that much money. So as evidence of this assertion, the main thing that I'm going to be using is XWOBA. What is XWOBA? XWOBA is essentially expected weighted on base average. It's a derivative of your weighted on base average, which is essentially uh, an offensive or, or pitching mechanism that uses linear weights to derive a whole bunch of mathematical shit that you don't care about. Basically, it tells you how good a player has been. What expected WOBA tells you is how good a player should have been based on the quality of their contact or the contact that they've given up while pitching. It can be a little bit more complicated than that, but the only thing that it's essential for you to know is that XWOBA is one of, if not the most predictive stat that we have nowadays. It's not a perfect stat, it's not infallible, but it's about as good as we have. There may be a few others out there that are better, but for pitchers and hitters, it's a very, very good predictive tool. And just so we have a point of reference, what is a good XWOBA for a pitcher? Well, I'll give you a few categories. An elite starting pitcher is going to have an XWOBA better than or around a 240 to 250. Anything in that 240 or .240 or .250 range is best of the bunch. Like, they are just elite. And this is for starting pitchers. Relievers, that their XWOBAs tend to be a little bit higher because they're coming in in higher leverage situations, giving up less contact. Pitch, not pitching for long enough, throwing harder, doing things like that. So we're not going to talk about relievers. We're just talking about starting pitchers. For an elite 240 to 250, that's generally the range that you're going to see them in. For a solid number one, you're going to be around 260, maybe 270. For a number two, you're going to be in that 275, 280, maybe 290 range. And uh, for a number three, 300. For number four, it's going to be around 320. And then anything past 340 or above is a back end of the rotation, maybe even replacement level pitcher. They are not very good. So with that in mind, let's go take a look at Madison Bumgarner and see what he's done in relation to this statistic over the past few years. So as you can see over here, here are Madison Bumgarner's ex-WOBA statistics for the past five years. And as you can see, in 2015, he was very good. This was around the time of his playoff dominance and things like that. He had a 273 ex-WOBA. That is right up there in very good number two territory. And then in 2016, he was also he was still pretty good. He had a 286. And then all of a sudden, in 2017, he blows up and it's a 318 which is not very good that's leaning towards back end of the rotation type numbers so you know initially you may could explain away this 318 x woba because he was hurt during this season i believe he only pitched about 110 innings um, so, you know, maybe he wasn't as effective. So uh, I'm sure everyone was expecting a bit of a bounce back campaign in 2018. But what we actually saw was that it got even worse. Now, to be fair, he did deal with some injuries in 2018 as well. As you can see, he only threw 2,053 pitches, uh, just a few more, really only 400 more than in 2017. I don't know if you can see this over here or if I'm in the way. But uh, his ex-WOBA actually got worse over a larger sample. And then this year, it got slightly better, but there were no excuses. He was still not very good, and he pitched basically a full season 
and uh, his raw stats were pretty good. His raw stats, he had like a pretty solid ERA and all that, but his ex woba his predictive stats were not good at all. Now, one of the things that you may notice is that his WOBA is consistently lower than his ex woba So what's going on here? Is he just consistently getting this lucky? I mean, did he get this lucky over the course of 13,000, almost 14,000 pitches? Well, that's not really it. Like I said, there are some flaws in the ex woba formula, you know, things like controlling the quality of contact and whether or not pitchers can do that and things like that. So, it does seem to me that Madison Bumgarner does have the skill to at least marginally outperform his ex woba to a certain extent. So while his ex woba is in the 321, 316 range, his woba is going to consistently be in the lower 300s to maybe upper 290s range. That's a possibility, but still, this has to be a major cause for concern as he gets older and maybe some of his stuff starts to slip a bit that this starts to regress back towards his actual ex woba numbers which at that point may be getting even worse so where does this rank madison bumgarner among all qualified pitchers i'm gonna give i'm gonna say qualifying is 450 plate appearances against as you can see justin oh wait, wait, wait no 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 let me sort as you can see, Garrett Cole is number one in the league from 2019 with a 238 X Woba and a 246 Woba. So he he's a guy that that has very tightly correlated Wobas and X Woba. So is Justin Verlander. So is Jacob Degrom, as you can see there. And then we keep moving on down the list, and you just don't see Madison Bumgarner. But let's just go to the very bottom of the list, just for a reference point. Adrian Sampson is the worst in the league with a 373 X Woba and a 382 uh, uh, Woba. So he actually got a bit lucky to be the worst in the league. He was even worse than that in reality. But as you move up here, at number 58, you see Madison Bumgarner at 316. This puts him in the same categories as a guy like Zach Eflin, a guy like Homer Bailey, Masahiro Tanaka. Not bad pitchers, but definitely not good pitchers. Uh, it do, like I said, it does seem that in relation to these other pitchers, maybe with the exception of Homer Bailey, he does seem to have a knack for outperforming his ex woba to a certain extent, but it's certainly questionable how long he's going to be able to keep that up. Julio Tehran is another uh, pitcher that is kind of known for doing this, but you can't discount the possibility of regression, even if you have a large sample size demonstrating that, uh, that this does seem to potentially be a skill for him. So we've established that his ex woba is not very good and that there is a very high possibility that he's going to start regressing. He, he already has started regressing from the point of his playoff dominance to, to where he is now. And a lot of what we saw last year was, a, was smoke and mirrors, but I want to answer why it was smoke and mirrors. And I think that there is one very obvious answer as to why. Let's just take a gander at Madison Bumgarner's home and away splits from last season, from 2019. It is dramatic, let me tell you. Okay, if you look at his home uh, OPS against, right here, what is this? 255 plus 364, what would that be? A 619? A 619? Oh, is that right? No. A six. 29 629 uh, I don't know I suck at math whatever um it, it, it's a lower 600s OPS that's very very good he has a 260 woba against that's very very good a 293 ERA that's very very good he pitches in one of the most pitcher friendly parks in baseball at AT&T Park this is something that you would expect when he goes away from AT&T Park, he put up a 5.29 ERA. That is terrible. He put up an 840 OPS against. That is horrific. A 349 WOBA. That is really, really bad. That is not good. He is not a good pitcher away from AT&T Park. If we scroll down here, his ex-FIP. Uh, at, home, at home, it's a 390 pretty good away from AT&T Stadium 
it is a 4.91. Not very good. AT&T Park, I'm sorry, not Stadium. It's not good at all. A 491 XFIP is not what you want to see. And for all these teams that are thinking about signing Madison Bumgarner to these massive contracts, this is something that you have to take very, very seriously. Because not only has he regressed from his more youthful form, he is not pitching well away from AT&T Park. And that's been true his entire career. If we go back and look, the, the, the only exception year is 2017. This is his exception year, and this is what people may point to. Uh, you, you can see right here, 340 ERA at home, 326 away, uh, relatively stable Wobas, OPSs are fairly similar. The problem is, is that he only pitched 110 innings and that you're weighing 110 innings against an entire career's worth of evidence to suggest that he is not the same pitcher away from AT&T Park as he is uh, when, he, when he is there. I mean, just take a look at whenever he was that dominant pitcher that we all know and love. A 194 ERA at home, a 415 away from AT&T Stadium, a 296 Woba away against a 241 Woba at home. It's, he's just not the same player. It's it, it's really a bit of an unfair comparison. Um, it, it, he's just not the guy that everyone thinks he is. To be fair to the Madison Bumgarner lovers, I understand why you would want Madison Bumgarner on your team. He does have this in incredible postseason legacy that he's going to leave behind. I mean, what he did was it in 2014 for the Giants where he just, I mean, he just took over the World Series and literally gave that city a World Series. Um, it, it, it's incredible. He is, uh, you cannot tell the story of baseball without Madison Bumgarner. He is an incredible talent. He has done a lot for baseball, but he's not that guy anymore. Whenever he was doing all those things in the postseason, he was an elite pitcher, or at least very, very close to being elite. He's just not that anymore. Every piece of evidence that we have statistically on Madison Bumgarner suggests that he, at best, best at very best best case scenario is a mediocre number three more likely he's an okay four and possibly he's back into the back into the rotation material or he will be very soon it's just it, it four years 72 million dollars is just way too expensive it's out of the it, it would be out of the question from someone like me if I were a GM running the team. What really scares me is that my favorite team, the Braves, have been heavily involved uh, in, in the news in, with names like Madison Bumgarner, as have a few other teams. And I'm telling you right now, uh, everybody is talking about, well, who's going to get Madison Bumgarner? We, and, and we're saying that as if it's like, oh, man, I hope we get him. When in reality, people should be saying, oh God, who's getting Madison Bumgarner? I really don't want to be them because it's not going to be a good contract. That's all I'm saying.